to do a bunch of more harmony stuff with lots of people that are not there yet, I think. Wait, no, there is people. Hi, can you hear me, Kavi? Because I see you in there. Hi. Whoop. While people come in, I'll just make that little animation play because it's lovely. And the name of that elf character because you see it has big ears is I forgot how we called him it's pink yes <laughs> because he because there's pink air hair so so yeah so that's that's the character that I will be doing uh, compositing magic on today Yay! so the thing that we're gonna see today is different kind of ways that you can kind of light your scene because you can do it uh, in a more automatic way you can do it frame by frame there there is many ways you can do it and even with the many ways there's many ways to do it then there's many ways to treat it as well so these are all things that we're going to talk about today all right so who's curious for some lighting stuff i am and uh, so I'm going to start right now. All right. So first, ooh, woo, woo, woo. so I'll start with a easy one. So let me just remove the thing I didn't, I've done before. Because you see here, I, I in advance, uh, while I was waiting for like the demo reel to play or something, I made a little system that allows me to draw little highlights. That's super cute. I can also take a little textures to paint with if I want a more subtle lighting look. Like that, that's kind of cool. Yay! I can do it for the shadows as well. They work a bit like clipping mask in any software that you use. Oh, that looks like a beard. Um, but um, I will destroy it so that we can rebuild it after. But the great thing with that system that I made earlier um, with the little cool wispy shapes that I can do like that. The cool thing with that is that it's not just a layer that I set to multiply or overlay or something. Like these colors are actually colors. So if I want the highlight on the hair to be a different color that I can just take it and put it a different color. And it'll be a different color. So that's really cool if you want to get a funky look to your animation or something. So these are all some things that we're going to talk about in a moment. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to get rid of these little systems that I'm pre-made. So that we can um, rebuild it together. Yay. Oh, crap. I dropped it. Get there. You know what's fantastic with Harmony 20? The fact that you can press enter and you get all your node library. So so I rarely go here now. I just press enter and all the things I need are there, which is great. Okay, so let's talk about lighting. So there's many ways to light. So I'm gonna start with the many ways that you can light your uh, project. Uh, and all these ways, like there's not one that is better than the other. It just depends on what you can do. Because in life, there is such things like sometimes you'll have, um, yeah, there's like time, there's budget. Skills can also come into play. Like I was not as good today as I was like five years ago. So all these things taken into consideration. Um, I will give you some little techniques that you can use depending on what your time budget and skill levels are. Because of course, hand-drawn highlights and shadows are beautiful, but you have to know how to do them and you have to have the time to do them, which is not always the case. 
All right, so one way to do the shuttles is the classic apply peg transformation. So I'll do it very quickly. And by the way, my animation is ooh, my animation is going through this composite on three layers uh, just because I want it to be quick. I have the main character on this layer. I have the back of the hat just so that it was easier to clean and paint. And the pupils are kind of, they have a little trick in there. It's because no matter how much I draw, large I draw these pupils, they will always appear only within the eye. So it's kind of like hiding a little bit of rigging into a hand drawn animation, and it's something that I love to do. So yeah, so that's why it has to go through a composite. But when I do compositing on my little boy here, um, I just have to treat this composite as if it was one drawing, because you see when they are united, it's still one drawing. So the lighting that I will apply, I will apply it to the whole drawing, not to separate pieces. But I mean, you could, but like that's not what I'm going to do today. All right, so let's get started. So if I want to do some very quick if, uh, lighting, I can get an apply peg transformation. The apply peg transformation is cool because what it does is it creates a copy, a lightweight copy of your animation. So then I can have this guy here and if I take the peg I can have two boys and you know if you keep at this you can have an army of uh, characters for you to uh, work with. That's usually how I handle crowds by the way I love to do crowds with apply picture information because all the animation is always the same. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, what we can do with an apply peg transformation is the classic offset lighting that we can do in most um, in most compositing software. So it's the trick to take that character and you just offset it a little bit. And everywhere that you see that my character is not, this is what that will get highlighted. So, and to do that, I'm, I'm just going to use a highlight node. And the highlight node, uh, it's one of the easiest <laughs> node to use to do highlights. It's like a plug and play solution for you. If you do this, uh, just remember that what goes in gets whatever is written here applied with the mask. So like if you get a cutter, you know, it's it means that your move away, <laughs> please. It means that your shape, so my my character here that goes through there, if I connect my apply peg transformation boy here, it will cut it, so it will disappear. And if I invert it, it will just cut away the part that the boy was not on, you know? So that's the cutter, but what if what happens if I take a highlight node instead and I do this? Then it means that whatever goes here will get highlighted by whatever is in the mask just like so but you see it doesn't look that great even if i invert it to get just a little rim light which is what i want sometimes it still looks a little weird so you have to remember to go into render view if you want to see the beauty of that effect um so of course into the highlight there's a lot of things you can customize i will not spend too much time doing that because time is limited today and this is kind of very easy so if you're interested into learning about that we have a learning portal to do that. I have videos on my channel that talks about that, so we're not going to focus on this. But I still wanted to show you how awesome it is to create some very quick and low price effects. So you see, like, you see how it gives, uh, it already gives a bit more um, quality to my animation. And this is super easy because since it's using the original animation as a mask, inside the literal mask. Well, it means that as it plays, it will also just highlight everything, all right? But there's some limitations to this technique. So if you look here, sometimes you'll get very abrupt um, details like that because, you know, it's, it's plug and play, but it's got some limits. So sometimes that's why people prefer to draw their own shadows, all right? But before we get into that, there's even something else that you can do that I like a lot. It's like, um, I call it the applied peg transformation um, 
for grown-ups because it's a bit more complicated, but it's cool. So instead of taking this one, uh, which is great, by the way, I love it for certain things. Like if I know that the light is just coming from this side and that my animation doesn't move that much, I will use it all the time. I overuse that thing. But another uh, little secret that a few people know is that you can also use a mat resize to do your lighting. What exactly? So like, who here knows what the mat resize is? Probably no one because it's not that much of a common note. So let me explain. The mat resize in its roots was used to give a fake, a uh, thick line art to something. So if I do like three here, you don't see anything because you need to be in render mode. Ooh. And what it does is it will take the color of the surrounding and um, kind of spread it away. And of course, since you don't want to get this thing here, <laughs> usually when you use the matte resize, you would use also a matte blur to make sure that your color, um, that your color was not bleeding into it, right? So you get a matte blur to give a color to your line art, let's say a big black here. And then you would connect it behind. So right now we don't see it, right? But if I take that matte blur and I put a matte resize on it to make it larger, that, that, that was a node that was used to give a fake line art to things in general. Yeah, let's share the love for the matte resize because it's cool. Um, and by the way, you can even animate the color of that matte blur so you can have like a rainbow line art. I'm just saying, if somebody ever does that, please let me know. I want to see that. Okay, so let's say that this was my line art. Anyway, I don't want to give it a fake line art, but I just want to show you that it's possible. So that's cool. What I'm going to do with it actually is I'm going to use it in reverse. So I'll keep the matte blur just to show you what happens. But instead, I'm going to put it in front. And instead of having it uh, larger, I'll have it smaller. So minus two or minus three. So we really see what's going on. So you see the matte resize is going to make my shape smaller. So if I remove the matte blur just to show you, it's creating a smaller version. Like it's eating away my animation. Right. So what you can do with that is use this. Um, and if you invert your map, you'll get like the opposite. And if you put it on top, you'll be able to um, eat away your oops. What have I done? Ah, you'll be able to sorry to use this as your highlight. All right. So I'll just say it again because it's a bit hard to understand. So what the mat resize does is it will instead of making your 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 picture larger uh, like that. So instead of making it larger like we did before, I'm going to make it smaller. All right, and I'm going to use that in my highlights, for example. So I'm going to go get back a highlight node like we did before. All right, so nothing different than what we did before. It's still the same trick as the um, apply peg transformation. So you see now the shape that we created by having our animation smaller, you can plug into a highlight. And now it's going to shine like that. But if you invert it, then you can get the outside. This is something that I love to do if I have, for example, uh, maybe not this color card. I'm going to set it maybe to a warmer yellow or something. Like maybe your character is uh, in a darker room and there is just a little window of light or like a little fire making light behind your character. Uh, like that, okay. So maybe there's a little light, oops, that's uh, lighting your character from behind, and it's great to give it a good rim light. So, light here, doing this thing, boop. And then if I draw something, like maybe maybe he's standing behind a window or something. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, that window is going to be colored <laughs> yellow. Thank you. So 
So like maybe there's a, a zone of light behind and you want it to kind of surround your whole character. Well, you could do that with the match resize. The difference is that instead of offsetting your animation, it kind of shrinks it. So I think that sometimes it's better at, at, uh, at surrounding your character than the apply peg transformation is. And the great thing is that you don't have to put any keyframe information, any pegs. It's just going to follow um, whatever animation you put in it. So yeah, it just it just seems to surround your character a little easier uh, than the apply peg transformation. But the downside is that you don't see it unless you render. Point, point. <laughs> so that, that, that's the drawback. But for something as quick and automatic as that, I, I mean, I'll take it. So uh, I can take the mat resize and you can even um, animate how much it does, how much it's, how large it is. So if it's standing in front of a fire or something, you could have it like wiggle between maybe four, like minus four and minus two. I'm going to take a Snapchat. No, not Snapchat. Snap. How was it called? No. Snapshot. Yes, that's it. A snapshot of this by clicking here just to show you how it would look if it was a bit larger. And you know, if it was standing in front of a fire, you could just animate it going like. And it's cool, right? Yeah, but in the OpenGL, you won't see it. But you know, it's fine because it looks good. Um, so that is one thing that I like to do. Um, and the other thing I want, oh, by the way, it, it also works great for more of a solid lighting. I'm just saying, um, yeah, it works great. So have fun using that to give a little more lighting to your character and stuff. Little disclaimer though, if you were, now I'm using it with a highlight so I can directly plug it in. But if you were, you were using this with a blending node, because that also can happen. I'm gonna do it, blending node. So because the highlight is great, but it's a bit too plug and play for me. Like sometimes I wanna get more control over my effects. Uh, especially when I used to work into the industry and people will just throw PSDs at us and be like, yeah, take that effect that we drew in Photoshop and do the exact same thing in a completely different software. And we'd be like, oh, okay. And it worked because there's a way to do it. But like, if you want to get more professional results, sometimes the highlight node is not enough. So I'm going to throw that away and go get a blending node. But you know, the blending node is different than the highlight. Please come back, highlight. I apologize for throwing you so far. So can anyone give me the difference between this and this? I'm kidding, I'll just tell you because it's easy. One has a mask and the other one doesn't. So that's the main difference between a kind of a direct filter node and a masked filter node because the direct one is just gonna be whatever goes through here gets my effect. So if I want, if I go here and I put an overlay to that thing or luminosity or something, it's going to give it the blending node, just like it would in any other software with blending nodes. And of course you need to be into render view to see most of them. Oh yeah, that's, that's visible. Okay. So that's the blending node It's whatever goes through here gets whatever is written here. And there's many, uh, there's many direct nodes. There's blending, there's also glow. Like all these nodes that don't have a mask, they're they're gonna do the direct effect um, right away. So, whoop. so that's glow, all right? That's the difference between glow and highlight, for example, is that glow is, what it, glow is whatever goes through here gets glowed. <laughs> and here is whatever goes through here gets highlighted by this which is a difference because it makes it so that you don't need to use a cutter for nothing. Woohoo! Um, right, so I'll go back to what I was saying, which I forgot. Yeah, the blending node. So if you just put it here, well, congratulations, you have something that is like blended, but that's not what we want. We want a certain part of our character to have the blending node. 
And in that case, it's going to be the matrix size. Same. All right. So to do that, I will take my blending node and apply it to here. Da, 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 da. So now we have the area that was created earlier with the matte blur that is now going through the blending node. Yay! And I mean, the blending node, you just choose whatever you want, right? You can, it can be anything. Oh, that looks cool. I like it. So yeah, that, that I'm very professional, you see, because usually I just go through the blending node and then I just like click here and sometimes I just go down and try to look for something magical happening. Because I know the definitions of them, but sometimes just seeing it is way better. So like, don't be afraid of the long list. Just, 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 just go through it. And if you're interested, we have big documentation on it. So with that thing, you can just choose a cool blending node. I'll go get overlay because, you know, everybody knows what overlay is. Where are you? There you go. But what if you want to get the outside? Um, you'll need to get a cutter because you see the blending node here doesn't have a cutter, but the cutter has a mask. Uh, I meant I meant the blending node doesn't have a mask, but the cutter has a mask, which is great. Um, so you can take this and then you can use your animation as a mask for your mad blur. And that's where it gets a bit complicated sometimes. But if you invert it, then you can get what you want. So that's great. And there's many ways to go about that kind of um, lighting. And if I go here, was it this one? Um, I think it was this. And then this, and then this. Amazing, gorgeous, yay. Um, yeah, so there's many ways to do your lighting. So we talked about the match resize, we talked about the apply peg transformation, and these are so apply peg transformation, match resize, these are two good ways to do it very cheaply. Um, and even to create your highlights, like I said, you can use the, I'm going to bring back the apply peg transformation just to show you the different options you have to light up your character. Because it was very quick and I could see it in OpenGL, which is what I want to see. Um, like that. Um, okay, so to light up your character, you have many choices. You have, like I said, the highlight node. That's going to do something like that. And allow you to kind of see it in real time. Which is great depending on how you push your peg. I'm going to exaggerate it just so that everybody can see it. So you can see it in real time, which is very great and very much a very time saver. Um, and like I said, to, to highlight it, you can choose the highlight. That is a plug and play solution. Oops, I disconnected something. Um, and like I said before, the, the shading depends on what you're supposed to do. And what um, is in the chat now is another uh, solution that is more automatic, but that's not what I'm going to cover today. But if you're interested, let us know. And we might be able to cover it after the winter break. Who knows? That could be interesting. Um, yeah, we always take suggestions. So um, yeah, I, I, the reason why I'm talking about shading today is that I know a lot of students are finishing or kind of preparing their compositing phases for um, after the winter break when animation kind of kicks in because most animation school do pre-production before the winter break and then production and post-production after the winter break. So I'm just trying to give as many ideas I can to all of you students who have <laughs> cool short films to work on. Um, so like I said, the match resize, the apply peg transformation is two things that you can do that are cost effect that they're really low cost um, 
But if you have that cool scene where you want to really have the most control with your highlights, you might want to draw them yourself. So that's what I'm going to do. And one way to do this is to create a highlight palette. So I usually call this one the FX uh, palette. And in there, I'm going to add a couple of colors. Maybe like one is going to be the highlights. I'm going to put it in yellow and I'm going to name it because I am a good person and I name my color most of the time, uh, especially on live stream. That will be the FX and that will be the shadows. Maybe these would be useful after. So my shadow, I, by the way, never shade with a pure black or white color. I always try to use little colors in there because it's more dynamic and more interesting. Mm, like that. So, so with these two colors, I'll be able to maybe draw my highlights and my shadows. So even for drawing your highlight and shadows, you have multiple ways to do it. So let's start uh, by just naming what they're going to be. So I'll show you three different techniques. One of them is by having all your, um, one is by having your highlights and shadows uh, separated. On two layers, so you'll have like your two layers. But there's also a way that you're going to be able to have your highlights and your shadows be on the same layer. And after that, you will use a node to separate these two colors. Sometimes it's quicker if you have a very, very detailed look. Like if I want to have my hair be like very, very uh, worked on, very shaded and have access to my shadows right away. And I don't want to be, I don't, and I don't want to have to switch layers all the time. Like there's ways for you to, to work that. So that's also something I'm going to show you. And the last one will be, um, how to affect the colors. So, um, yeah, sorry, I'm losing my thoughts there. So what we're going to see next is how to create our highlight and shadows layers, but after that to apply it. And there's a, another trick instead of the uh, highlight and glow notes and stuff, but you have to stay to see it because it'll be in the end because I need to build it up, right? So yeah, bear with me, it's coming. Um, Right, so before we do any compositing on our character, let's start by just giving it a proper highlight, right? And, oh crap, I <laughs> I drew it on the same layer as my line art because I'm smart. But you know what? That's not a problem. So let me just explain to you again what the problem is, is that I drew my highlights and shadows directly on my character. So I would kind of need to try and erase all the little things I did. Um, but thanks to Harmony and its amazing color palette system, if I want to get rid of all the yellow instead of trying to remove it and thus erasing my character in the process, um, oops, oops. Yeah, because instead of like erasing my character at the same time, which is bad, what you can do is take your select tool and here there's a thing that nobody knows about. I don't know why. It's red, it's super bright, you can see it. It's called Select by Color. So I'm just going to click on this, click on the yellow color, and then just delete it. Amazing, right? You can delete, you can select stuff by color. So if I wanted to get only the pink of the hair gone, I could. That's great. Yay! Um, Right, so where was I going with that? Yeah, we have to create our highlight uh, lay drawings things. So I'm going to start by having them on two separate layers because this is very easy and it's accessible. And it's something you, having your highlight and shadows on two different layers is something easy and accessible that you can even do on Harmony like Advanced and not Premium. So that's cool. So I'm just going to go quickly and draw a couple of shadows here and there. Um, and I'm going to use a little textured brush because I feel like it. Which one am I going to take? Who knows? Maybe the one that I created in the last stream made with a crown. That was fun. All right, so that's what I'm going to use to create my beautiful highlights. 
So little highlights like that. And now you can see that, you know, our parents, when we are young, they teach us to draw within the lines. But, you know, as you grow up, you don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> um, because there is things to help you not having to do that. And one of them is the cutter. So as I said before, um, you have the choice to either use a highlight node for your highlights or like to do them yourself. So instead of, uh, so what you can do is, as I told you before, you can take the things that you drew and just, where did my highlight layer go? There you go. And just have it go through the highlight node, right? Like that, and then just make sure that it's not too large, right? So you could do that. But one thing you could also do is just uh, use a cutter to cut your color. There you go. Um, and and as a general rule, like there's no <laughs> strict rule with that. Like it's not going to break your software or something. But as a general rule, we tend to have the cutter be directly under what is what it's uh, in the middle here. So I will align it with my highlights. It's just a little convention that we have to keep things in a straight line and have the dotted line be the one that goes woo to the other one. Uh, the thing I'm doing right now, it is possible to do in advance. I couldn't, I can't tell you how from the tip of my brain like that, but I do know it's possible. So what I'm teaching right now would be possible until I take out the color override, which will be a bit more complicated, I think. But since then, it's it's possible. All the things I've done was uh, achievable. It's a bit more complicated, but it works. So uh, we have a whole Learn Portal course on it, if you are interested, because all you need is your color, your layers, and your highlight notes, and they're available in both Advanced and Premium. Yay! All right, so, so with that now, what it means is that I can really draw whatever I want. I don't need to have like fancy contraptions with like the uh, match resize or the apply peg transformation thingy and I can draw whatever I want so if I want my shadows to be super stylized and have like strokes in them and be very unique and have dots and hearts and I don't know stars uh, you can do that so that's great and then after that to composite it you have the choice to use the highlight node the glow node the blending node I'm gonna go get a blending node here just to show you um, like that to put, change it to something else. I'm going to go get a overly nude and it's so lovely, right? And sometimes you can even have something like that. And if you want it to be blurry, you can just go get a blur. So that's when effects become, start to be a bit more, um, they look complex, but it's not as complex as people think. It's just because they see a lot of nodes, but honestly, it's just, because instead of having all these little thingies into one node, such as the highlight that gives you the blur and the color and stuff, you just kind of do them yourself. So you have the blending that is going to decide what happens to your drawing. You have the blur that's gonna blur it. If you want it to be transparent, you just go get yourself a transparent node. And that's when compositing gets very, very interesting because it's your node that you're creating in the end. So instead of having the pre-made glow node, which is great when you're starting out, you can kind of make um, your own with a lot of different things that you add up. So uh, that's great. So I, I think that's also why I love, um, I think that's also why I love uh, harmonies because you can be, it can be as easy as you want and as complex as you need. And even, it, I say complex, but even that, it's not that complex. You just need to connect these together and it works. Uh, one thing though, is that usually we tend to do, if you tend to do compositing, do it before the cutter, just because some effects such as the blur and st uh, sometimes might work less good if they're after the cutter. I'm just gonna show you. Sometimes it doesn't change much, but sometimes at the edges it can kind of blur itself up and not be fun, but it's kind of behaving okay right now. You see, it's not behaving, behaving okay because the blur is blurring my highlight outside of my character, which is sometimes what you want. 
But if it's not what you want, just be sure to put your. Um, you see here, so just be sure to put your blur before your cutter and then it will be cut, right? So, but I like to do that to get some bloom effects. So just depends on what you want. All right, and now for the last technique I want to show you, it's um, because so far what we've done is we've done a zone and we applied a effect to that zone to do the color. But if you want even more power over your highlight and shadows, what you can do is use a little method I love to use. Um, it's especially useful when you have more of an anime style. Wait, I forgot something. Ah! <laughs> By the way, uh, the thing I've shown before, I keep forgetting stuff, it's crazy. The, the, the thing I'd done before with the highlight and shadows, of course, they were on two different layers, which allowed you to very easily just um, draw your highlights and your shadows very easily like that. <laughs> it's beautiful. Give it a little heart and stuff. Um, you can do that, but and then you need to just do the same thing. So I'm going to copy paste it. You can copy paste it as long as there's no animation on it, just so you know, because otherwise you're going to get a clone and clones are evil when you don't want them. All right, so same thing. But instead of a overlay, I guess I'm going to go with a multiply, right? Because that's what everybody used to do. Shadows. Multiply. Great. Um, but you still needed two layers. So if you wanted to do that on one layer instead, you'll see it's not that complicated. What I'm going to do is just copy paste uh, one to the other side, right? Like that. But instead of putting it directly, what I'm going to use is uh, a node that we call the color selector. It's called a color selector. And what this basically does is it filters out the colors inside your layer. So here under this trend, it's going to be only the uh, FX highlight that's going to go here. So under this, it's only the highlights. And then I can make another color selector. Boop. And this one will be a leaf. This one will be for the effects and then the shadows. Um, so then this, <laughs> this side is the highlight and this side is the shadows, but they're all drawn on the same drawing layer, which is yet another reason why this software is so great. Yay! And then I can just go get back my little system and, it'll go, and it's going to work exactly the same. But instead of having another layer to take care of, I'll delete it and just do that. And it's going to work the exact same way as it did before. But now I only have one layer to take care of. So now this is going to be renamed as highlights and shadows. Yay! All right, so now that we have our, our zones, instead of using cool, fancy uh, systems like that, we're going to have control over our colors. All right, so I'm going to unconnect them just for now. I'm going to keep just the highlight. And what I'm going to show you is how to do lighting with your colors directly. So to do that, to do that, make sure that you have your color palettes and that your colors are rightly named. So here I have my color palette with all my uh, my colors, my swatches. Uh, most of them are goodly, greatly named. I'm just going to scoot it up like that so that you don't see it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then what you're going to do is you'll need to clone them. Really important to clone, not to duplicate. You need to clone them, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, and if you clone them, Harmony is going to recognize what they are and they're going to be linked together. So you're going to have like three different colors. You see here they're changing, right? So they're going to have changing colors like this. So I'm going to have one palette that's going to be my dark colors, one palette that's going to be my highlight color, and then one palette that is like my regular colors. And instead of giving my highlights a blending node, I'm going to give them their own colors. Right, so bear with me. That's what I'm going to do for the last minutes of this amazing stream that is already almost over. This is really sad, by the way. I wish these would last like three hours. But that's just 
me, unless that's what you folks want. Who knows? Um, time goes by so fast when you're having fun. Um, right, so what I'm going to do with that is first you're going to get a color override. Yes, like each stream, I'm talking about the color override because everybody's scared of that node, but usually, but, but trust me, it's pretty cool. Um, so what I'm going to do with that color override is kind of similar to what I'm going to, what I we did with the layers, uh, the color selector. So I'm going to go here and in that color override, what I'm going to tell my animation, I'm going to remove the highlight just so that we can focus on that pretty character. I'm going to go here and what I'm going to do with that is simply to choose not my, not my regular palette. I'm going to go choose my highlight palette. And I'm going to tell it to go here. Because it's my whole palette. If you wanted to do that trick only for one color or two, you could do it. But honestly, it works better if you do it on the whole palette. And then you press close. And that's it. Whoa, I'm going to do it again just because it's super complicated, right? Everybody's scared of the color override, so I'm going to do it again. You get your color override node. You make a new connection to it. And then, bear with me, you go here, you find your highlight colors, and then you allow it to pass. And that's it, then you can close it. Whoa, that's so cool, right? Um, <laughs> But then the problem is that all my characters is color overridden, if that's a word. I think it's a word. I made it up and I decided it's a word. So all your character gets color overridden. But what we actually want is just one part of the character to color override like that. Okay. Uh, sorry, my computer froze for a moment and I got scared. Um, so what I'm going to do is okay, get my highlight, but like, don't. Like, don't just connect stuff randomly, right? Like, read before you connect stuff, because <laughs> people like to connect things here. But, like, if you take your cursor and you pull it here, it says texture. So, like, don't go and connect your layer here thinking it's going to work like the highlight node, because it's not. There's no mask. <laughs> it's a texture thing. So, like, what you're going to need to do is... Um, just use a cutter to cut your color right. So I'm going to use the cutter and then I'm going to go here. I'm going to give myself some space. Go here and the cutter will serve to eat away the color override. All right. So, so I'm going to get my, my highlight here. Of course, I'm using the color selector now, but you could have just used your highlight layer if it was isolated, right? But I'm building up on this, right? So you go here and you connect it here. And if you invert it, I'm going to show you what it does here. So if I invert it, then I only get the little parts that I drew. Like what I see here is exactly what I see here. It's just that instead, I'm going to put them together so you see. So that one is yellow because that's the original color and one is uh, colorful. By the way, what I'm doing now to put all my displays at a thousand pixels, don't do that <laughs> unless you're live streaming to show things to your audience. If you leave that in your scene, your scene is going to be heavy and your computer is going to cry. So don't do that. But um, yeah, so that's my highlight. And since I connect it here, it's going to, the highlight shape is going to eat away at my color right? So allowing just my colors to pass. And now the beauty with that technique is that I can control my colors highlight with my color palette. So I'm going to go get my highlight color palette. And for example, for the hair, I'm going to find my hair color. And I will make it yellow or another color that I want. And maybe, so you see, uh, I, I'm making jokes with that because you know, you're not gonna put it like this fancy yellow color, unless you want a very crazy look, which could be cool. But sometimes just because when you highlight something, if you highlight a color that is already light, it's not gonna show up that much. 
So what you can do is like for the shirt, for example, instead of being a lighter blue, you could tint it a little more yellowish. Uh -huh. So now, it, now it's becoming to be interesting. Uh, it's great to tint your color. And the beautiful thing is that no, like whatever color you feed it in there, uh, that's the color that's going to appear. So it's not so much about a blending node. It's about you choosing what your colors are. So I have lots of friends who just designed their characters. And, and that's actually what they do on uh, in uh, most uh, Japanese animation. They're going to have, like the shadows are not composited by blending notes. They're hand-drawn and they're like, it's the actual color that is doing the, woo, the, the highlights. So that's great. Uh, and that's kind of my version of it to kind of save time. So instead of drawing the shadows inside the character, um, what I do is I draw them on a separate layer, but I still have the same advantage that the uh, self-traced shadows offer, which is to be able to choose your color of each individual shadow. So now I'm just going to get rid of this dumb coloring and just actually make something that looks good so you actually believe what I say. <laughs> and um, yeah, so the good thing is that no matter what color I take to do my effects, it's just going to use my color overrides um, colors instead. So if I were to do like actual, and you can do it in real time too. You don't have to do it into render view. Let's say I want to draw some very cool shadow shapes. Uh, you can do that uh, very easily. And you see how it's going to spread across different colors? I just think it's really fun to do that. All right, and wow, that's so pretty. And to finish this, I'll just show you also how you can do it with your shadows, right? So I'm gonna, I already pre-made a darker palette. And by the way, to make my highlights and dark palette, to start them, I just go to the tint panel, but we already have a video about it. And we have documentation that you can look at to know how it works. I don't have time for you to today to show it to you, but I usually start with that and then I adjust the other colors. So for example, the highlight of the shirt, I would put it maybe a bit more yellowish so that it actually shows. Same thing for the hair, there could be maybe a bit more uh, yellowish like that. And now for the shadows, I mean, it's the same. You just get another color, right? And instead of this one being the... Oh, and by the way, you need to connect your color right to your characters. Otherwise, it's not going to work, right? So color connected first. And after that, you can choose your palette. Uh, I'm going to get my dark colors. And that's it. And after that, I mean, it's the same. You just get a new cutter. And as usual, my whole color variety is showing. So just make sure that you're using your shadow layer and connecting it here. And now what I'm going to draw with that color, um, the, the, the shadow color, the, sh the colors I'm using right now are important just because of the color selector, right? So just as a reminder. So now I'm going to get my FX shadows and then I'll be able to just paint my shadows as I go. And I love to use that technique because then I don't need to switch layers. All I need is to switch my two colors here to create my look, which is very, very interesting to do. Um, high quality shading. But of course, you don't do that on all of your scene. You try to keep that for scenes where it counts because it is way longer and tedious more tedious to do than the regular uh shadows you were we than the quicker shadows i was doing before but you know i'm always i'm always uh, up for um something quicker and lastly because i'm not done you see now i'm using the color override to do these colors but nothing stops you from putting a blending node on these. <laughs> so if you want your self-colored shadows to also have a bit more um, 
wow, he can even put a blending node on these specially chosen colors uh, if you want. So, I mean, just just have fun. Like that. That's what I love about the software. You can you can just you can just do anything you want. You, you can create these systems and have fun experimenting. Um, like I, I came up with this little technique to do the the colors here because uh, I I taught for a little bit in, in 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 Tokyo and I thought that the way that they did shadows was super interesting. I was like, how can I adapt that to how can I merge both techniques of shape shadows and self colored shadows? And I don't know, like you can maybe somebody's gonna come up with another system that is even more fun. So have fun doing that and. You can just keep drawing these. So I'm going to draw maybe one or two more frames. And unless anyone has other questions, I guess we'll have to part ways soon, which is so sad. Oh. And as usual, by the way, if you blur your shadows, I just want to make a clear thing because that's usually something I see in my classes. Yay! If you put a blur, be sure to always put the blur, unless you want to get a bloom effect. Remember to put your blur before your cutter. So it's inside. Wait, no, what am I doing wrong? Uh, oh, right, yeah. Um, yeah, be sure to put it, uh, to cut it with your character after, uh, just to uh, let you know. So I would put my blur here. Whip. And then you would need a cutter to cut your uh, blur so that it doesn't uh, overflow <laughs> uh, around your character. Um, like that. There you go. So that it stays within your character. I had fun, but uh, sadly, I gotta go. Yeah, next next week we have another stream, and it'll be uh, Lindsay's great comeback at more rigging knowledge, pouring, and making your rigs even better than they were. Yay! So thank you so much for coming to the stream. Um, it was fun, and I can't wait to come back. And yeah, you can find more stuff to learn on the learn portal i have my youtube channel there's so many places to learn so i hope you had fun and if you ever use that in anything you do please please let me know and i just want to know what people do because because it's fun right so so yeah you can just tag me in anything you do and i'll be happy to see it and if you want us to share it be sure to tag toon boom as well and if you want us to share what you do, be sure to tag um, Toon Boom as well uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and anywhere, because we love to see what you guys do, and we love to share it and um, make people have new friends, because it's great. So with that, have a wonderful day. I'll make my animation play one last time, and after that, uh, I'll be on my way. Yay! I love drawing hair. It's really fun. <laughs>